Back in December, I visited Sadugashima. If you see any significance to going to Sadugashima in December, you've probably read Mob Love Alternative. But if you haven't read Mob Love Alternative, then this is the video for you, because I'm going to tell you all you need to know to get the most out of Mob Love Alternative while saving yourself a few dozen hours of reading through its two lackluster prequels, Mob Love Extra and Mob Love Unlimited. <laughs> First of all, I want to make it clear that I don't want to discourage anyone from reading Mob Love Extra and Unlimited. The fact of the matter is that some people actually like them, and there's no denying that knowing the complete background story makes some of these scenes more enjoyable for a variety of reasons. That said, if you're anything like me, and you were really just interested in Mob Love Alternative for its reputation as an all-time great visual novel, and you thought you'd just have to suck it up and read Mob Love Extra and Unlimited to have any idea what was going on in Mob Love Alternative, you don't have to. At least not if you have the basic background info that I'm going to give you in this video. I also want to let you know up front that my goal isn't to summarize these stories. I'm just going to tell you the parts that you need to know for Mob Love Alternative, so if you want the complete story, you're going to have to find that elsewhere. Now let's get started with the first part, Mov Love Extra, and introduce some of the characters. Your male lead slash self-insert character is Takaru. He's just a regular guy, and I don't mean regular for a visual novel or harem lead, I mean a regular guy in non-anime terms. He's a bit of a slacker and likes to joke around, but is good-natured when push comes to shove. He also loves video games, and in particular, this one mecha arcade game that he's always playing and is supposedly amazing at, although there is a running gag in the visual novel that whenever you play the game yourself, you either lose or draw, or at least I did, so there's always the possibility that I just sucked at it. Then we have his next door neighbor, Sumika. She's the girl next door, both literally and in terms of the girl next door character trope. She's a normal girl in much the same way that Takaru is your normal guy, they grew up together, they know everything about each other, and Sumika has a crush on Takaru. She's one of the two main girls in the story, the other one being Maya, the rich samurai girl. Maya is the daughter of an extremely rich and powerful family, and she has really old-fashioned sensibilities from her unique upbringing, which also means she lacks common sense in everyday matters. She's trained in the way of the blade, and she's athletically gifted. She also has a huge crush on Takaru, for reasons that aren't really necessary to spoil here. The one spoiler I will throw at you is that Maya had a sister, but she died at a young age. Maya also has a few maids who serve as comic relief characters. Those are your two main girls, Sumika and Maya, although there are some other girls you get roots with in the story. First up is Incho, the Japanese word for class president. Her name is actually Sakaki, but you usually hear Incho from the main character. She's your typical glasses girl, very intelligent, but also a very hard worker. But she also has this huge stick up her ass, and she's always lecturing everyone around her, which gets really annoying. Takaru does get along with her to some extent, but there are also times when she really rubs him and the reader the wrong way. Then we have her polar opposite, Ayamine, who's a total slacker and Incho always feels the need to lecture Ayamine so they're constantly fighting. She's also very athletically gifted and the one minor spoiler I'll throw at you is that she has some sort of relationship with an older guy, who does appear in Mob Love Alternative although in a different capacity. Then we have Miki, the upbeat cat girl. Aside from her appearance, her main characteristics are that she's extremely talented at archery, but she also suffers from stage fright. She comes from a pretty rich household herself, and her father smothers her with affection. Finally, we have Mikoto, the reverse trap. Mikoto dresses like a boy, and nobody seems to know that he slash she is physically female. Mikoto's father frequently travels around the world, going on crazy adventures, and he drags Mikoto along with him. Because of this, Mikoto is extremely resourceful, but also misses a lot of school. These six girls are all Takaru's classmates, but two of his teachers are also really important characters. First is Marimo, Takaru's homeroom teacher. She's extremely nice, but also a bit clumsy and airheaded. Takaru sees her as a kind of big sister and sometimes forgets to call her by her proper name in class. Then there's Yuko, the physics teacher. She's a once in a generation genius, and she sometimes forces Takaru to stay after school and assist her with her research. She's not just book smart, but she's also really quick witted and highly perceptive. She also drives like she's straight out of initial D, and she's a gamer, owing one of her greatest scientific breakthroughs to inspiration from a video game. There's your core cast of characters, so now let's get into what little you need to know about the plot of Muv Love Extra, at least insofar as it's relevant to Muv Love Alternative. There are several roots, and all of the girls are bangable except for the physics teacher, Yuko, and the reverse trap, Mikoto. Which is actually the bad end, not because he slash she is a reverse trap, but because you end up getting dragged on one of his slash her father's adventures across the world and missing out on everything at home. 
all of these routes take place in the same general timeline between October and New Year's. That's basically all you need to know from Muvlov Extra in order to get the most out of Muvlov Alternative. I just saved you a lot of time now, didn't I? Now let's get into Muvlov Unlimited, and unlike Muvlov Extra, where you mainly need to know the characters, in Muvlov Unlimited, you do need to know the plot. I'll just generally say that the characters are largely the same as they are in Muvlov Extra, except some of the characters are much more serious because they are living in a world that's under the constant threat of alien invasion. Also in this world, all of the girls have some sort of relation to important figures in the government, the army, etc. The timeline once again starts in October, but when Takaru steps outside, he sees that the whole town around him has been destroyed. Takaru wanders over to where his school would normally be, except it's now a military base and he gets detained. The first character from his original world we meet is Yuko-sensei, his old physics teacher, who is the vice commander of this military base. She's initially suspicious of Takaru, but for some reason decides to let him in under her special command and plugs him into a training squad featuring his classmates from Muv Love Extra, with the notable exception of Sumiga, who does not appear to exist anywhere in this world. Yuko-sensei explains to Takaru that the world is under attack by aliens they call Beta, and throughout the story, Yuko-sensei often consults with Takaru on various issues that are classified to everyone else. The main struggle throughout Muvlov Unlimited is that Takaru is frustratingly powerless. The rest of his squad is already well trained, while Takaru is struggling, both physically and psychologically, to scrape by throughout the whole story. For example, early on, the squad gets sent on a training mission. Takaru is physically inadequate as usual and clumsily gets bitten by a snake, which sets him back even further throughout the test. However, this does lead to an erotic situation with Mikoto, who in this world identifies as female. When they start training on giant robot simulators, they discover that Takaru is an exceptionally talented pilot, presumably because he was always playing giant robot arcade games in the world of Muvlov Extra. However, when it comes time to face off against Beta in the simulation, Takaru has a panic attack and has to abort. Later on, he faints simply by hearing a briefing that he's going to be sent into a battle zone. In fact, throughout the main plot of Muvlov Unlimited, Takaru never actually goes into battle against Beta. Sometime later, a spacecraft comes crashing down towards the base, and Miki, the cat girl archer in the previous world, who is a sniper in the current world, shoots it down. This goes to illustrate that the enemies aren't only Beta, but other humans as well. Towards the end, a volcano is expected to erupt, so Takaru and Meya get sent on a mission to clear out civilians in the area. There's an old lady who refuses to leave. Takaru wants to forcibly remove her, but Meya is against it, saying that would violate her principles and the trust people place in the government, etc. blah blah blah, it's boring and goes on forever. Finally, they convince the old lady to leave, but not before they get buried under some rubble and things get a little steamy between Meya and Takaru in the cockpit of the giant robot. On Christmas Eve, Yuko-sensei, who's normally rational and composed, gets drunk off her ass and has an emotional breakdown. She'd been trying to solve a particular scientific problem related to cramming a certain amount of processing power into a limited physical space, and if only she'd been able to solve that one problem, perhaps things would have turned out differently. But it had just been announced that humanity was effectively given up on the fight against Beta, and instead moving on to the backup plan of escaping to another planet, which only a small percentage of the population would be able to do, while the rest would be stranded on Earth and doomed to lose a battle of attrition against Beta. I should also point out that at this point, Yuko-sensei is finally bangable. In Muvlov Unlimited, there's one extremely important new character not present in Muvlov Extra. Her name is Kasumi, a mysterious, quiet, almost autistic seeming girl with these rabbit ear thingies. She's often tagging along with Yuko-sensei and hanging out in a dark room with a brain floating around in a tube at the center of it. At times it appears that she somehow has knowledge of Takaru's original world, even concerning things Takaru had never told her or anyone in that world for that matter. At the very end, when people are boarding the spaceship to abandon Earth, Kasumi refuses to go and in the middle of her argument with Takaru about it, says a line that only Sumiko would say the exact way Sumiko would say it. This gets Takaru thinking that perhaps Kasumi is this world's version of Sumika, but this is not confirmed and the mystery gets carried into Muv Love Alternative. In the epilogue, Takaru remains on Earth, keeps fighting on, and develops into an incredible soldier in due time, but by this point, the outcome is already hopeless. This brings us to the beginning of Muv Love Alternative, which starts out in the same fashion as Muv Love Unlimited, except this time, Takaru is finally ready to put up a fight. That's really all you need to know from Muv Love Extra and Unlimited before starting Muv Love Alternative, and we covered it all in less than 10 minutes, not bad. 
Now, there are some characters in Marvel of Alternative who come from even earlier works, like Kimiga Nozomo Eien, aka Rumbling Hearts, and Akane Maniacs, but I hardly remember the first and I know absolutely nothing about the second. In short, damn near everyone goes into Marvel of Alternative without knowing literally all the background info, so don't worry, somehow or another, things will all add up. And just in case there's a detail or two that I may have missed or mixed up somehow, feel free to leave a comment about it. I simply ask that you don't put in any major spoilers for Marvel of Alternative.